the late 1930s, America was still in the throes of the Great Depression. The stock market crash of 1929 had been followed by years of drought in America's heartland. The Dust Bowl wiped out entire family homesteads. Often with nothing more than the shirt on their back, these beleaguered refugees headed for the golden state of California, there to begin a new life. Against this backdrop of despair and hardship, Southern Pacific Railroad President Angus D. MacDonald made a bold move. Believing his company could help break the national recession by providing new jobs, he commissioned the design and manufacture of what broadcast commentator John D. Hughes would later call the most beautiful train in the world, the k -Light. The motive power was built at the Lima Locomotive Works in Ohio. Each engine was cast out of a single piece of solid steel. The GS4 steam locomotives and checkers weighed in at over 870,000 pounds. That's 435 tons fully loaded. Coupled together, the engine and tender were slightly more than 110 feet long, 10 feet high, and 15 feet tall. The locomotive put out 78,000 pounds of tractive effort to the drive wheels and was manufactured at a cost of $175,000 each. The wheel arrangement was called a 484. It had four-wheel pilot trucks in front, eight main drive wheels in the center, and a four-wheel trailing truck behind the drivers. The 80-inch drive wheels virtually towered over Southern Pacific President Frank Russell Sr. in this 1950s photograph. These four GS2 class daylights were photographed shortly after their arrival in Los Angeles. Principally, the trains were intended for passenger service between San Francisco in the north and Los Angeles in the south. In later years, these engines also saw duty between Los Angeles and El Paso and occasionally on feeder lines. But it was the famous coast route between Frisco and LA that daylights were best known for running. From the engine to the parlor observation car, the daylight was painted in uncommonly bright colored stripes of orange, red, and black. They installed broad, sweeping skirts along both sides of each engine to make them look long and sleek. The passenger cars were fabricated by the Pullman Coachworks in Chicago. From front to back, the daylights were streamlined wonders to behold. This was an era in history when nothing could stop us. If it was bigger, if it was better, it had to be made in America. and 50s, traveling by train on Southern Pacific's daylights was a first cabin experience all the way. Opulent polar observation cars with gracefully flowing fantails replaced the boxy looking caboose. Inside were photo murals, carpets and drapes, porter call buttons, and chairs that swiveled in any direction. The $4.73 ticket fare between San Francisco and Los Angeles was mighty hard to beat, costing only a penny a mile. Imagine riding across the countryside in your reclining seat with porters serving your every whim. Many romances blossomed aboard the daylights, especially during World War II when the daylight transported more GIs than any train in the country. Why, with so many miles of swaying seductively in your seat, gazing across the tavern car and a dashing young man in the opposite seat, gave rise to many a torrid tale, perhaps best left in memory and not retold here.
there was famous horseshoe curve. It was so sharp, passengers on the rear of the train could wave to those in the front. This was the terminal at San Luis Obispo and the main station in Santa Barbara. In those days, porters would stand and wait for the line to form at the San Francisco terminal. These were gentle times that most likely would never be recaptured in our generation. When gasoline was two bits, pinup girls were still in fashion, and daylights were the most beautiful trains in the world. But like all good stories, 1958. Her <clears throat> in 1958, the last engine made her final run. They took off the side skirts and pulled them onto sidings. The diesels had proven to be far more cost efficient to operate. They required only a third of the labor needed to run and service a steam engine, and fuel consumption was almost cut in half. Out of more than 50 daylight engines, only one GS4 locomotive was saved, designated as engine number 4449. It was donated to the city of Portland, Oregon, where it was put on display in Oaks Park, never to run again. 17 years later, it was America's 200th birthday, the Bicentennial. An engine was needed to pull the Freedom Train, so all eyes turned to the forlorn old steam engine at Oaks Park. Weather beaten and vandalized, it wasn't a very pretty sight. But after tremendous difficulty and a massive restoration effort with hundreds of volunteers, the 4449 was restored, refurbished, and painted red, white, and blue as America's Freedom Train in 1976.